Welcome to this week's vlog and today is a debit. So I have now read or finished my reread of Fourth Wing and oh my goodness. I forgot how with reading it the second time it kind of the ending kind of reminds me of Babel and just how you know like that you think that the school's doing something great but it's really not and how you know the revolution is definitely did and so like that is like what is definitely happening and I like it. So now that it is done I'm going to be reading Iron flame yeah. right but you know like a fourth wing was actually pretty pretty good and you know and there's a surprise ending in which I'm not going to let anybody know about because you have to read the book I'm so excited that it's done and so next week or sometime this week my book of the month order should come in and I'm not gonna tell you which one I got right but I did get an add-on but I'll show you when it does come in addition to a four or a iron flame I am gonna read a uh, hail Mary by Andy Weir plus the two book of the month books that I did end up getting so yay but uh, yeah so this is just kind of uh, my reading plan so the two from book of the month plus uh, Hail Mary and Iron Flame so we got four week uh, we got four weeks so that means four books plus and next week next Monday is a holiday so which means I don't have to work either job so which means I can spend all day reading yes, which means I like you know extra time and extra ability to be able to do that I'm so excited but yeah that's kind of it for me I'm so excited that I actually read it, enjoyed it. Oh my goodness. All right, and I did kind of rearrange like kind of like my back shelf here. I mainly just kind of added, well, I took out some books, but added like my, uh, what is it, my classic literature section there. That's kind of it. You know, and I got my, my book of the month books, which I haven't read yet, but you know, I wanted, right? You know, Phantasm was going to be like a good book for me to be reading as well. And now that it's October, it's spooky season. Sometimes for some people, uh, like the kind of like the spooky Halloween season kind of lasts from like September, October. For me, I feel it's kind of like mid-September to mid-November just because that is kind of like the fall-ish type of season because, you know, the beginning of September, we just still do got some warm days and then into November, it, you know, it, it gets colder, obviously, but it's not really winter yet. I don't know, that's just kind of like my thought process behind it. Anyways, I'm just rambling at this point. Hopefully everybody's doing well. Everybody's going to have a great and wonderful, fantastic week. And uh, yeah, thumbs up. We'll talk to you guys later. Okay, right. bye. Hello and welcome to this reading tippet. All right, so today or last night, I decided that I was gonna look into some audiobooks that are on Spotify and YouTube. And guess what I found? I found that Allie Hazelwood came out with a new audiobook or just a novella, I should say, that is specifically sponsored by Spotify to go out. And it was like two, two can play, I believe. And oh my goodness! Here, I'm gonna double check that title. It was actually really good. Right now, it is super super spicy spicy yeah two can play and that i would say it's definitely not a safe for work kind of content it is that spicy oh my god but it was really good and it's just what it is about is that uh, you have uh, two rival gaming or video game companies and they need to work together to create this one video game that's based on a book series and it's enemies to lovers they are both in love with this book series that they had or they've read since they were a kid they both particularly love it so it's just kind of they were enemies he thought that she hated him but actually she did it and they end up like really being in love and having or not like just having a really good budding relationship and I thought it was really well done oh my gosh and it's funny because like I knew that her next book was going or this novella was going to be like super spicy and she did deliver on that and then the second audiobook or short story that I listened to today was are you ready for it the Curious Case of Benjamin Button by F. Scott Fitzgerald. And it is actually really good. It's a lot different than the movie with Brad Pitt and Kate Blanchett. And I would highly recommend like either reading the short story or listening to the audiobook. And it, what it, it's just what it's about is that we have this um, child that was born and he was born an old man. And he uh, so he, he was born being like 5'8 with a really long beard. And then slowly over time. So it's a kind of thing 
he tries to like his dad takes care of him you know as he's growing up and he wants to go to like when he turns 18 he wants to go to Yale he looks like he's like 50 right so he's like trying to sign in as a freshman but then he can't he's not allowed into Yale because you know he was 50 even though he's actually like 18 in real life and then but like again like nobody believes him and then when he is like 18 or you know in his early 20s he goes back to Yale and then when he gets to the age 16 he's finding it like university or like Yale to be really hard and then he has to drop out so during his midlife or during the middle of his life he ends up getting married and having like a child and then when he's like 15 14 15 years old his son regrettably has to take care of him and the son ends up having kids of his own and of course and then Benjamin ends up like taking kindergarten for about three years and the first year he went he was there with his uh, his grandson but uh, you know over time he just wasn't able to comprehend things because he's de-aging and then slowly over that and then eventually Benjamin passes away as an infant says being 80 years old or when he is 80 it's just it's a very unique story I do like the interpretation that the movie did have but it's just getting the original like kind of like source material makes it all the more worth it so yeah if you haven't to uh, uh, so Two Can Play by Ali Hazelwood and The Curie Case of Benjamin Button by F. Scott Fitzgerald would recommend them right? It was well done. Loving it. And that's just kind of it for today. I'm not sure what kind of other audiobooks that I might have because there is a Jane Eyre as well as Gulliver's Travels, so maybe one of the two. Don't want to put limitations on myself, right? But that's kind of it. All right. Bye! Hello and welcome to this reading tip. I've actually found the audiobook for The Art of War by Soon Tzu and I'm happy that I listened to it because this was a really good, kind of a dry listen and kind of like a dry read I would think. So but I'm still happy that I picked up the book. I was kind of really following it along as I was listening. But it was really great. It is just never really considered the war to be this kind of art and just like what it means and it, it is to really win war you need to understand your enemy because if you don't then you don't really know what's going on and it's just oh my goodness lots of good things i can understand like why a lot of kids or in high school have to do this as a mandatory read and oh, just trying to draw the different things that to, need to be done with it and it's just very interesting i would say it was just kind of a two out of five for me just because it's just kind of like a drier kind of reading concept that uh, it was just kind of it was a different thing I can understand why it's a concept but anyways that's just kind of it for me and uh, give it a thumbs up bye Hello and welcome to this reading tip. So I have finished another classic literature book this uh, week, woohoo! And that is How to Win Friends and Influence People by Dale Carnegie. And I mainly listened to the audiobook for this one as well. And because it's free, uh, because it's in the public domain, so I was able to listen to it on Spotify, which was uh, super nice. This book was, uh, I think, originally written and published in 56, but then now it was like republished in 24. So one of the different that I found in the audiobook versus like the publication that I have it was that there was like a couple stories uh, that were taken out which is completely fine and that I know that but it was like the entire book is there don't, don't get me wrong but there was like one story in particular in which like I kind of wish that I had now the preface maybe it is in here and I just couldn't find it and I'm just being ridiculous and that the next time I go through it I'll find it right so there is that caveat all right but uh, so like some of the language so as you can see like this book at this moment in time okay so I guess to preface this is a non-fiction book and I was not anticipating it to be a non-fiction book right but I'm glad that it was this book actually came at the right time the right place for me it actually really spoke to me to be honest right as you can see that uh, I've tabbed up some of it and I have underlined and made notes in the book in pencil not in pen and I did not highlight anything right but I may do that eventually what I liked about the book was that uh, there is like a 
you know, a diary or place for notes or hate that you can in the back, which I thought was like super great. I, I don't know if I would do that, but when I like to annotate things, I like to make it in the margins or right there in the book. And of course, with like a lot of fiction book or nonfiction, I'm sorry, they say, you know what, you should review this book like once a month or these principles to make sure you're getting the full effect and you don't never forget them, you know, which is like understandable and everything like that. I mean, I think I might listen to some of the chapter, the, the chapters again, all right, but I found that the first half of the book really spoke to me more than the second half of the book. Kind of preface the kind of language that, uh, because it was like, you know, written it or published in the late 50s or mid 50s, I guess, and why we don't, we don't use the same language now. So he was like telling a story about like how like, this kid, he was like agitated and he got like a little fresh with the teacher. We would never say that in like today's, today's language. Another, uh, so I have underlined it, I marked it with this red tab and over what it says, I'm just going to read it. it. It's like, I guess like the lesson we're learning here is that, or the, the chapter says, if you must find fault, uh, there is, um, must find fault, this is the way to begin. I think the, the main theme is, is to be positive, to give compliments, to let, let people talk, to let people know that they're appreciated and that, you know, like it just really make other people feel amazing. Like, never diss, never put down, never get angry or frustrated with other people. Always kind of make things equal, make everything just very positive and, you, you know, kind of like never try to find fault with somebody or just try to phrase things in different ways. So that way, like nobody feels uh, just like put down or anything like that. I don't know. I'm not really, I don't know if I'm explaining it right. We're going to catch more, it's like you're going to catch more flies than with honey, right? So just be a happy outgoing person instead of like tearing. Example of this is, so he was saying this, the secretary needed to be told something. Thing. And secretary, so compliment the secretary, and then first, card compliments people in general first, and then put, and, and then tell them what you want. So he says, uh, "That's a pretty dress you are wearing this morning, and you are a very attractive young woman." No, don't get stuck up. I just want to make you feel good. From now on, I wish you would be a little bit more careful with your punctuation. Well, um, you can't say that now in the workplace. That you can't, you can't compliment, say, uh, you know, like their outfit, being like, "Oh wow, that looks really." Really pretty but then you can't tell them that like oh you look beautiful and then you can't then be like oh um you, it's like then you can't give them a backwards compliment you, you can't just be like oh like you don't get stuck up i just told you that so that way you could uh, you know feel better and you could do this for me right like no like you, you can't like just giving backhand compliments is never a good thing i guess like that's like one of the other themes of the book is just that you want to be you want to be genuine you're very genuine you want to be very sincere that you just generally just like want to be a good person because like if you don't all right then it's like like people are going to see right through that you know what I mean that people are going to see right through the insincerity of it and then they're just going to lose respect for you you know so you just you never want to be disingenuous and you always always would just want to just generally just be a good person you know that was kind of it right so overall I would say for a non-fiction book especially for all the non-fiction books I've read this year out of five and especially like because like I am most likely going to go back and uh, re or listen or even like reread and make like better notes on the first couple chapters that's just kind of it and I guess I'll share with it another thing that I did uh, underline because like my big thing is like it's just it's always about the other person and so one of the first lessons you'll learn is that uh, instead of condemning people let's try to understand them let's try to figure out why they do what they do there's a lot more profitable and integrity than criticism and it breeds sympathy tolerance and kindness to know all is to forgive all i don't know i thought that was really good so yeah okay that's enough rambling for me at the moment thank you for staying tuned and yeah yeah i'd highly recommend this all right bye why, hello everybody, and welcome to uh, this, uh, well, the today's dip, dip it, or this reading dip it, as well as the end of this week's vlog. So, my book of the month order came in, and what did I get? Uh, my book is Dearest Jack Jackie Walters, ooh, or Dearest by Jackie Walters. And I also ended up picking Incidents Around the House by Josh Mar Malmarin, which I think is going to be great. So, and then, of course, the bookmark says, 
I always know my place, which is a very multi, you know, faceted meaning. If you know what I mean, if you want to take it a certain way. So, ooh. All right, and then I uh, read a little bit more of Iron Flame. Not as much as what I should have for not doing so much last night, but I did read some, enjoying it. And it's just, you know, graduation's coming up. So for the month of uh, October, I plan to read the rest of Iron Flame, incidents around the house, and then Hail Mary. Yay! You know, at least I did do some reading this week, which is, uh, you know, all that I can hope for. There were classics and most of them were already books, which is nothing wrong with that. That's just kind of it for me. You know, I'm going to give you a thumbs up and uh, we'll see you guys uh, next week. Bye!